When we are executing a program and we want to use a class or a type defined in another assembly, we must have that assembly loaded into memory with our program. And this can happen automatically with the .NET runtime. The easiest way for assembly loading to happen is to establish what we call an assembly reference. We can do this inside of Visual Studio and have an assembly appear in that references node that we were just looking at. When you right click that node, you can select an option that says add reference, which will bring up a dialog box, which will allow you to select assemblies from the .NET framework as well as assemblies defined by other projects that you've created in a solution, or even just assemblies that are laying around somewhere on the disk. But the important part is, once I've established a reference inside of a project with Visual Studio, I can start using the types inside, and the .NET framework will automatically load that assembly when I start using pieces from it during runtime. Let's take a look and see how that works. Inside of the gradebook application, I want to try a little experiment with speech and see if I can get our program to speak a greeting and perhaps even the grades that are inside of the gradebook. And to do this, I've read about a class on MSDN, the Microsoft Developer Network that has a lot of the C-sharp documentation. The class is called Speech Synthesizer. And the problem is right now that class lives in an assembly that I don't reference. So not only would my program not run, it currently won't build because I have to have all of my assembly references in place for the classes that I'm using before the C-sharp compiler will even build my project. And Visual Studio is trying to give me a clue about this. It tells me that the type or namespace speech synthesizer could not be found. Are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? And in this case, the problem is an assembly reference. So let me right click on the references node and say add reference. Inside of this dialog box under assemblies, I can see a list of all of the framework assemblies that are installed on this machine. And there's a number of different ways to establish an assembly reference, including just browsing to an assembly that is living on my file system somewhere. But the assembly I want for the speech synthesizer, it is an assembly in the .NET framework. So I'll come up to the text box here in the upper right of the screen and just search for speech. And I can see there is a system.speech assembly. If I select that checkbox and say, okay, I can now see that system.speech is added to my list of assembly references. I can even right click this assembly, view it in the object browser, and inside of the object browser, I can see there's a system.speech.synthesis namespace. It is actually inside of here where I would find the speech synthesizer class that I want. And this class has a large number of methods that allow you to select different voices and do all sorts of tweaks to the sound and the speech that it's going to produce. But one of the easiest methods to use is just a method called speak, which takes a string and the synthesizer will speak the contents of that string. This is not a static method, so I do need to instantiate the speech synthesizer. But now when I come back to my program, I still have an error that I might be missing a using directive or an assembly reference, but this time I have the assembly reference. I just need to add a using statement so that the compiler knows this is the system.speech.synthesis.speech synthesizer class. And now I can create a variable called synth. Let's set that equal to a new instance of the speech synthesizer class. And let's say synth.speak, hello, this is the grade book program. And now when I run the application, that assembly will be loaded into my program. I'll be able to instantiate that class. And if I run this without the debugger, which is control F5, that's the shortcut. Hello, this is the grade book program. Then I have now successfully used the speech synthesizer. If I were to come back into Visual Studio and remove this reference, now I will start to have errors appear as the compiler, when I do a build, no longer knows where speech synthesizer comes from. I get an error not only trying to use speech synthesizer, but also just trying to use system.speech.synthesis. That's not a namespace that the compiler sees in any of the assemblies that I have referenced. So for most projects that you work on, the default assembly references will not be enough to get the job done. Quite often you're going to have some feature like talking to a database or executing business algorithms that someone else in your company has written and produced into an assembly. There's going to be some other features that you need to grab by referencing other assemblies. Another place where you will have to learn to manage assembly references is when you have multiple projects in a solution and one project depends on another type of project. Let me clean up this program by removing code that will produce an error. And then we'll take a look at that topic as I introduce you to unit testing with C-sharp.